Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and we are out here freezing in Jurassic Park. It is cold, and cold for me is like 50 degrees. But I had an exciting quick little video. I wanted to tell you that my hens are all cured from their bumblefoot. So I wanted to show you the remedy that I use that does not require surgery. In case you have a minor case of bumblefoot, what you can do at home without having to spend a lot of money, without cutting into your chicken's foot or anything like that. I am just so, so excited to tell you. So I know you're gonna be jealous. I'm rocking the chicken shoes and the Christmas pants and the fuzzy socks. It's just so incredibly awesome. Be jealous. And Lacey is talking nonstop. But what I wanted to show you is that I had two new hens who were integrated after a quarantine period who were given to me by a friend and their really sweet chickens were really happy with them but and that's actually all three of them right there but two of them had confirmed cases of bumblefoot so I waited until we had spent a few weeks with them in quarantine and then when we integrated them I started coming out here every day and checking their feet and trying to treat them and I'm going to briefly go through just everything in Bumblefoot in case you're new to it. So Bumblefoot is basically a staph infection that your chicken gets because this is what they do all day, right? They dig around in the dirt and they get little micro abrasions on their feet. But because they're out in the dirt all day, those cuts can easily get infected and it turns into a staph infection. Now Bumblefoot can actually also be caused by trauma on the pad of the foot. So like in like the equivalent of the palm of your hand, the pad of their foot and that could happen if they are jumping up and down off of high roosts. They're coming and jumping too far and hitting the ground really hard. But usually that's happened from them getting a cut on the bottom of their foot. So then it's a little open wound, right? The skin has been opened and then they're getting germs in it. And it's not getting cleaned or being able to heal on a regular basis. So I will say that I have treated Bumblefoot the same way before, although I think I did it better this time. So I wanted to show you quickly what I did. <laughs> chick, 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 here comes Blue. And I had to do this with two hens. One of them, I'm looking for her, is Talaria. And they're all getting ready to go to bed. So Talaria is probably in there eating. But she, there she is, yeah, she's inside. I know. She is a black French copper marin, and she has the feathered feet, hence her name. There she is walking around in your shot. But she had minor bumblefoot on both feet. And then Carmen Hen Diego, hello sweetie. It's amazing, she doesn't hate me after all the treatment I've had to do. Um, she had a bad one on one foot. And what I'll try to do after they've gone to bed is I'll try to put a little addendum here on the video and show you what their feet look like now that it's pretty much healed. So how do you tell if your chicken has got bumblefoot? Well, if, unfortunately with chickens with any kind of injury or illness, they're going to hide it from you if at all possible because they don't, uh, this muffet's being a jerk, because they don't want to be kicked out of the flock. They don't want to attract a predator because they're visibly limping or because they smell blood or anything like that. So unless your chicken is really, really, really sick or really, really, really in pain, they're going to hide it from you and they're going to hide it from their flock mates. So that's why I recommend doing a medical check on a regular basis. Um, if you know your chickens well and you feel like everything is going well, you don't have to do a medical check more often than once every week or so. But that's how I found out. And these girls did not have a super severe case of bumblefoot. The way you can tell is that you look at the pad of their foot, so not on their toes, but on, again, the pad in the middle of their foot. And like I said, I'll try to show you tonight but they'll have a scab and a scab on a chicken usually looks black but they'll have a scab on the middle of their foot and that's a sign that of course there's been an abrasion and the body is trying to heal if it's bad then you will see when your chicken is just standing you will see swelling and redness like on the webbing on the inside of the fingers there you'll see swelling and redness and your chicken will start to limp unfortunately by the time that happens though, that means that it's a bad case that's been going on for a while. It's gotten infected. What? What's going on, Blue? Everyone's getting ready to go to bed, having their last couple of little bites of food. So with my girls, I did not notice a whole bunch of, of redness signs of a more serious infection, but they had a huge scab. And in talking to 
my experts in the San Antonio Backyard Chickens group and in doing research on my own, I got the vibe of, you know what, it's not gonna hurt them for me to come out and bond with them, for me to treat them, and I'll show you what treatment I did and make sure that it looks like it's healing before it gets worse. Because what happens in a serious case of staph infection is of course the infection gets into the blood and it can end up killing your chicken. And I've had to deal with bumblefoot before and it's disgusting and it freaks me out. If there is a more serious infection, you will actually feel a hard kernel here to where you try to squeeze it. It's like us squeezing like on our fingerprint. It should be pretty squishy, right? But if it feels really firm and hard, like there's a pebble or like a little piece of something hard there, under that scab, that means that the body has tried to isolate the infection and it's made a hard kernel of, it starts out as pus and then it turns hard, it hardens. And then if it gets to that point, Blue, go to bed. If it gets to that point, then a lot of times you have to cut it out. I didn't want it to get to that point. So I've been doing a less invasive remedy and this has worked with me healing two chickens, Blue and Flopsy, which are my two brown girls still outside, and then Talaria and Carmen Hen Diego. So this is what I did. I had a container and you can see all of this in my chicken medical kit. So I'm gonna go through these things really briefly, but what I did, hey Tally, hey Chi Chi. <laughs> she's a big girl and she loves her snacks. So she's like, food, snacks, snacks? And oh, you need to go to sleep, goofy girl. So what I did is I had a different container. It wasn't this, but it was warm water, deep enough for me to get the chicken's feet in it. It's not a huge soaking bath, but a couple of inches of water enough and then what I did is I had warm water where I could dissolve some Epsom salt into it and I'm not gonna lie I don't measure it out precisely sorry for the audio I don't measure it out precisely I just dump some in there because what you're doing at that point is you're just trying to soften the flesh and the scab so that you can kind of assess what's going on and I hold them in there ideally 10 or 15 minutes but just as long as you can stand it and while I'm doing that, I occasionally put one hand in there and I'm just rubbing their feet, like I'm trying to clean all of the junk off so I can see what's going on. And then, sorry for the noise, I'll be brief. And then after they'd been soaking, I have a towel and I dry off their feet. And then I was alternating. Um, I would put vetericin on, which is a germ killer. It's sort of the equivalent of hydrogen peroxide for us if we get an incision. And then I was alternating either putting Neosporin on, which has no pain relief additive, or Prid, which is a drawing salve. And so it tries to pull stuff to the surface of the skin. Then I'd wrap it up with a little square of gauze and then put it with a vet wrap, wrapping it in between each of their toes and holding that gauze in place. And I would come out, I grab my girls and check them at night when they've gone up to bed. So I'm not having to chase a chicken around out here. And I had this table and my chair and stuff set up. I had my headlamp, I had the light from my phone, and I would sit out here and do that every night for a couple of weeks. But the girls are healed now, the scabs have come off on their own. I did not pull them off. They came off on their own so that now there is healthy tissue growing underneath and they are good to go. So I'm really, really excited about it. Again, you can check out what's in my chicken medical kit. I have a playlist that's chicken health and medical issues. So it has all different kinds of topics, but I'm really excited that they are all healed without me having to cut into their foot or with anything more invasive than that. So we are good to go here. So here I am and forgive the really, really terrible angle. I'm trying to film this by myself. So what I'm gonna do is show you, this is Carmen Hen Diego and she had just gone to bed and I grabbed her, but I needed to do this in this specific little window where you guys can see me and it's not too dark, but she's already gone to bed, so I'm not chasing her around. So what you're looking for is the remnants of a scar or a scab. See the black in the middle? But instead of it being, I'm trying to keep it in focus, instead of it being a full circle like it was, a black circle, you could see how most of it's come off. See, and this is what a healthy foot looks like. It's just nice and pink and even, other than just being dirty, right? Because at the end of the day, we're still chickens. So as you can see from your perspective, if I turn it like that, the lower half of the scab has already come off. And I feel so bad because she's molting. So I put her down as quickly as I could. By put her down, I mean like she half jumped. So, so she's gonna go to bed, but I wanted to show you instead of it being a full round, and it was pretty perfectly round, black scab that was about the size of a pencil eraser, instead of it being matte, now you can see it's half gone and the tissue underneath is not red. It doesn't look angry. It's not infected. It's not swollen. It's just healthy tissue. So 
At this point, I am not trying to grab her and mess with her anymore because underneath this scab, I know we are good. It's going to be nice, healthy tissue. So that's my little success story. I'm not gonna grab Talaria because she had two very minor marks on each foot, but for a mild case of Bumblefoot, and forgive me, I'm like, I'm freezing, that's why I'm breathing so shallowly. Um, for a mild case of Bumblefoot, you'll see after you've soaked a chicken's feet in warm water with Epsom salt, and you're looking at the flesh of the foot, it's all supposed to be the same color. So that kind of scaly, grayish color is normal, and it should be all uniform. And for a minor case of Bumblefoot, you will see a big black scab that was right there in the middle. Um, if it's a more severe case of Bumblefoot, and you can always email me and send pictures of chicken feet, and I can tell you that looks normal, that looks like something that's a bit more serious, that looks like something that's a bit more minor. Um, if it's a more severe case, then you, even if your chicken is standing and you're just looking down on them like normal, you could see swelling in between like where the webbing of the toes is. The flesh will look red, it'll look angry, similar to what we would have as an infection as humans, right? The skin, you could tell it's fighting something, it's mad, it's, it's inflamed, it's swollen. Um, it's not, hello honey, it's not the normal level, sorry, of just skin tone. Um, you could tell that something's going on. That's when you may have to do something more in regards to a more invasive procedure in that you may have to um, get the scab to come off by soaking it and then peeling the scab off, which I know is bad form and we normally don't do that. But if you have an active infection in there, as opposed to just an incision, um, you may need to do something. The chicken chick, Kathy, um, she has a good video showing how she bandages up a chicken and then she's got a lot of photos. If you look just the chicken chick, Bumblefoot. She has a really good article. And then between her and me just doing some reading and research and act and asking local gurus, the local ex experts, that's where I figured out that I don't need to try to cut into their foot. Let me try doing the less invasive techniques first and see if that works. And it did. If you have questions, like I said, email me. You could put stuff down in the comments, but remember you can't put pictures or video down in the comments. So if you need me to help, I'm here to help. I'm still learning too. So happy holidays from Jurassic Park. Bye.